All right, YouTube, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to be overclocking my 1800X Ryzen 7 on the Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard by Asus, or Asus, whatever you wanna call it, your call. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and jump into that right now. All right guys, so now we are in the BIOS and uh, I have already been messing around with some overclock. Reason for that being is I had started to do a lot of the recording, but I had so many crashes. This literally took me a couple of hours to even try to figure out what I could get even remotely stable. Um, what I ended up settling on was um, 4.0. And just to show you the changes I made, uh, I did put SOC voltage at the 1.1. I heard. I heard so many people talking about you just need to do that if you're messing with any overclocking, mostly for the RAM, but um, for RAM stability. Um, but I figured I'd just do it and get it out of the way in case I wanted to do something later where I wouldn't need to increase that. So just get out the get it out the way. It's not too much more extra voltage over stock. I think that was like a 1.09, 08, something like that was I think the stock whatever it was doing in the beginning. So I just bumped it up just a hair, but um, the voltage here, um, had had to put that at 1.43 to make that stable. Um, I think I can go to a little bit lower than that. Um, the thing is, is I had it, uh, I, I bumped this thing up to a 4.1. Um, I could not get that thing stable. I had this uh, voltage pushed all the way up to 1.48 and still could not get that under control. So I, I backed off all those, t all those voltages and uh, all, all I did was I bumped it back down to 4.0 and then I just bumped this down to basically 0 0.05 is what I backed it off on the voltage more or less um, so I think I can I just kind of guesstimated about where I thought I could be stable at 4.0 from while I was I did start at 4.0 I didn't just jump up to 4.1 I don't really like to stress test things so I like to do things in usability the closest thing I get to a stress test is like a uh, fire strike in uh, Cinebench so and I have some scores for that coming up after this segment. I just wanted to show you what I was sitting at, what was stable, fully stable. I have zero problems with this in any way. I did a lot of different testing and things like that just to push my CPU up really high uh, percentage-wise. Um, so that's what I got. I got uh, 4.0. Um, I don't know if everybody was really wanted to sit there and see me tinker and reset and tinker, but... Um, honestly, the thing with the program or the, uh, monitor I'm using to actually record the BIOS does not actually, or well, it's too small for me to use for like windows itself. So I'd have to keep flip flopping between recording on that and recording on OBS. It's, it was too much of a hassle. Um, I literally, I just do not have that kind of time. Um, so that's all I got for you. Um, it's going to go to some scores and then I have some temperatures after that. All right, YouTube, so now that you know what settings I got that became stable for me, uh, I'm going to run through a couple of test things so you can see some things. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is run through Cinebench, and this should be fairly quick. The other one I might do some time skipping. So we're going to let this run, and yeah, 1739 was actually the fastest I did get, but my saved one is the 38. Which is fine, but I just want you guys to see this for yourselves. Um, so I think the lowest I got was like 1729, I think, something like that. Ooh, uh, what? That's not right. All right, so we're looking at 1661. Uh, I wasn't thinking about it, but. I do have OBS running in the background doing a s screen capture on this entire thing. I might interject right at this point and then show my old numbers. Basically what I'm doing right now is uh, I'm just going to run this through Cinebench real quick. This is with the stock settings uh, of the 1800X. So I'm going to run this uh, just so you can see the difference between the 1780, I'm sorry, 1738 and then stock score, which I think was 15 something if I remember correctly okay so 
just just shy of 15. Uh, I'm also running OBS on this as well. So I'm going to run this twice just for redundancy. I want to say 1563 was kind of like an average of what I was getting, but it just just shy of 1500 is what I'm getting with the the OBS uh running in the background cuz that that eats up some CPU. So so that's that's all I wanted to do for this. All right. So for our next test, we're going to be running Firestrike. So I'm going to be flipping around a couple different clips through the actual benchmark just to show you some of the stats I had in different parts of it and then we'll be jumping ahead to the end. Like I said, I don't want this video to be too, too long. I mean, let's face it, everybody's gotten a rising up to 4.0. Alright, so basically what you're looking at here is uh, at this point right here, getting, you know, in the 20s for my FPS couple dips down to 14 13 um but honestly it's to look at the uh the cpu so this is the ryzen 7 this is um eight cores 16 threads um that top line for the cpu that first one is the overall cpu usage so i'm sitting about i think five to seven is kind of a range where it's kind of working um it's mostly been around six, but like so, right here it said, you know, that that dipped down to four point one or four point five, I should say. Uh, so there's seven. They're just even up to twelve, um, but it's staying relatively usage overall kind of low. So as far as the highest thread, I have that sitting at about twenty, twenty-ish um, percent. See there, it's kicking almost to twenty-four, twenty percent. 13.5%. Now that uh that second number there that is actually whatever the highest thread percentage, the highest thread usage. Uh I don't know which thread that is, but that is the highest thread. Um so right now I'm I'm average I'm sitting at uh, 33.1c, which I think for what I'm doing is pretty good. So the overall usage maybe not maybe that's kind of average, I don't know, but it's also not cranking the CPU at this point either. So uh, I'm gonna leave it at this segment, and then we'll go to. Uh, I'll probably sk I'm gonna skip the two graphic tests because this isn't a graphics overclock video. So we're gonna cut uh, to whatever the next one is, which I guess is the physics test. I think. All right. So now we're starting the physics test. Uh, I'm, to be honest with you, I'm not sure that this um, is physics on the GPU or the CPU. I cannot recall. Um, both of them are kind of high, so yeah, that actually might be a CPU test. Uh, but as you can see, that was 56.8C was the highest that that went. Um, I did not catch that quick enough for the FPS. Alright, so we're about to start the combined test. That's pretty good numbers. You don't think I've ever seen... I don't think I've ever seen mine go a single thread over 63 or 4. 63 or 4, I think, is the highest I've seen. I mean, not um, stress test aside, you know. All right, so what we got here is 8901 for my overall score. Um, now, this is going to be weighted because I have OBS running in the background. So that is going to bring my score down, as you saw with the, um, with the Cinebench score, that... It does. It's it's gonna impact that. So, I've I've broken ten thousand on this exact same rig. I actually have a screenshot of it somewhere. If you give me a second, um, but I just want, I want to go over this score right here, right now. So, I got my physics score, I got my graph score, I got my overall score, and a validation warning. Of course, everybody knows about those. Uh, yeah. So now we're gonna go to the. I already had that pulled up too, didn't I? Yeah, so I'm sitting about here. Um, honestly, with an RX 480, that's that's not terrible. Not really. Um, so I just wanted to show you where I was at on that grid, and then show you graphics, you know, and all that stuff or whatever, and tell you where I'm at. But let me cut this down. Move this out the way because I thought, yeah, I got one right there. All right, so this is what I get without OBS running without anything without steam nothing just or well with steam obviously but um 
just running that program, no extra streaming or anything. So I got a, yeah, I just broke 10,000 there. And yeah, so that, that put me at 64% of all the results, which is significantly better. I mean, overall compared to what it was like 50 something. I should have wrote that down. Um, yeah, I'm doing this all kind of winging all this. So bear with me on this one. <clears throat> so yeah, just that simple thing of OBS brings my score up that much. So this also is not reflective of my, um, stock score which I believe, hang on, I should actually have that somewhere. All right, and just to show you my previous score without um, without any overclock, so my physics score was uh, 16.5K. Um, this brings my overall score to 9,844. And this is with the overclock, which brings up almost 2K extra on the physics score. And... Yeah, about a thousand two hundred ish. Did I do that the wrong way? Yeah. Some more. Yeah. So yeah. So not too too much. As far as an overall score, um, that does affect that because of you know the GPU scores and stuff like that too. Um, that factors in. So <clears throat> the CPU is not the only weight to this. But um, I guess I'm gonna leave this video off here. Hopefully, in the future, when they come out with the pro versions and the, uh, or not the pro versions, the uh, Ryzen twos and uh, whatever the Zen twos and stuff are, they got a lot of stuff lined up for the next couple of years. So hopefully, we can start pushing overclocks further on the uh, version twos, the uh, Gen twos and threes. I guess I think the twos and threes are still supposed to be on AM four. AM4 is supposed to go on till like 2020-ish, I believe. I'm pretty sure they said 2020. So hopefully by then, when the platform itself starts maturing a lot more, that we can start pushing a lot more of these overclocks a little bit further. Because I really, I could not get that 4.1 at all. And I did, those voltages were way too much. I was not comfortable with them. Just looking at temperatures, We're looking at a max of, uh, yeah, just, just shy of 60C for the max during all those benchmark tests and things like that. Uh, granted, as as I play longer through like a video game, it's going to slowly increase a little bit more. Um, I do have a fairly large reservoir, so sometimes it takes a second to heat the whole loop. Eventually, the loop starts equalizing, and there will be a slight temperature increase above the top end now as I have time in playing so but that's not what this is for this my averages were 34.9 or i'm sorry 35.9 uh, and my lowest was 27.5 which was my idling stuff uh idling temperatures um so so from 27 to 58 that's that's not too bad considering i'm at 4.0 and my voltage is at like 1.43 3, i think it was yeah 1.43 yeah, 1.43 is being my max, or my 1.3, 1.438 being my max, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm going to leave you here with that, and uh, as always, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you later.